Hello and welcome to the video. This is my first video on this new wing from Team Black Sheep. This is the new Capito. I think that's a very small rum based cocktail. Um, the name is kind of a bit tongue in cheek because it's kind of the smaller version of the Mojito that I looked at a while ago. This is a much less extreme version of the Mojito. It's a lot smaller, obviously. Uh, it breaks down for transport, which is fantastic. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but it is definitely one of those things that could be launched single-handed. Now, when the Mojito originally came out, I was asking TBS, as I ask all of the manufacturers of fixed wings that I deal with, please, please, please make a sub one meter wing that ideally can break down into smaller parts so they can go in a backpack. It's something that I love and I need, I want and have wanted for a long time, ever since ZOHD retired the original ZOHD Dart, if you remember that, still fly mine, love the thing. Um, I love these kind of forward swept wings because they're incredibly forgiving in terms of store characteristics. And they're obviously listening because they have produced this model here. Also, excitingly, with a new flight controller, an all-in-one flight controller that goes in the back. So this is one of those things that I'm kind of really excited to put together and take flying, because this is more up my street than something like the Extreme Mojito is, which is all about going exceptionally fast. This, in its default configuration, you can fly about 20 minutes, it's quite fast, it's a very aerodynamic again, just like its bigger brother, but, talking to some of the test pilots who've been involved with the test flying of this through development. It can either be set up as a 6S ripper, but some of them have all been setting it up with a very large 2S battery and getting over an hour of flight time as well. And I think that can be a bit misleading looking at the Team Black Sheep website. You kind of think, well, this is just another mini ripper, uh, but this is incredibly lightweight compared to its bigger brother. And if you build it out and keep it lightweight, you can get some really, really long flight times with the right motor, prop and battery combo. Uh, those of you I know I'm going to ask, what's it look like next to the Mojito? Let me grab that, I'll show you. It is an awful lot smaller. We don't have air brakes. Uh, some of the complexity and some of the weight that's in the Mojito isn't in here. So let me, first of all, uh, unbox this thing. Let me show you how it comes in the box. Show you a close-up of some of the more uh, funky pieces and then talk about my plans for how I want to build this at the end. So here we are looking down on the box again. Very excited the fact that this box isn't physically very big. That means that potentially the wing can break back down into smaller sizes, perfect for backpacks. And lots of us, as I've said in the introduction, are excited about the idea of that. So this is generally me unboxing it for the first time. So hopefully it's exciting for you as it is for me. Uh, first thing we're going to come across then is a bag of bits. There are two Metal Gear digital servos in here. We have the prop, we have some additional cables. We have the motor in here as well marked as an ES22072 2000 kV MR30 motor. So that is the default one that you get when you get all the pieces. A couple of carbon spars. Uh, we have a big one and two smaller ones. So that's gonna be for the wing. This little fella here, this is something that I'm really interested in getting my paws on. This is the new all-in-one flight controller from TBS. Now, this is going to be perfect for these kinds of wings, but potentially other wings too. We have a ESC connector in the back with the connectors. Um, we're going to need little 10 uh, centimeter extensions for the servos. We'll look at that when we actually build it in the next video. We have a port for the GPS, port for the receiver, and a port for the USB uh, remote things. We have a VTX and a camera port at the back that we're not going to use. Um, so that is just designed to pop in. What a great little unit. Even the power cable connected already. This is a fantastic idea. I love the fact that the ESC is part of this and it's just one specific unit. I'll have a closer look at that again in a minute. That's that. We have the obligatory sticker sheet because you never know we're going to need those. Okay, here we are. We're into the goodness. So we are going to have to put the servos into the wings and things. So that is the servo access port. Um, and by default, we have foam hinges. Uh, control horn 
is attached. We have a channel here for the servo arm uh, to run along. This is the way that it connects in the body. Uh, so these two go inside the body and it's actually held in place by elastic, uh, which gives it a little bit of resilience. We have a couple of holes, hopefully you can get that on camera, uh, for the two carbon fiber rods that go through there. And we have the channel for the cables to come in here too. Now this could be laminated. I know guys have laminated it for the higher speeds. Could potentially separate that and put a CA hinge on it as well. Um, that's not terrible actually, but I know lots of those who are looking for high performance will probably split the hinge and do something with it. But that's um, lots of weight. Very, very reminiscent of the Mojito. No LEDs. Uh, no leading edge protection, although most of us would probably put some tape or something on there just to help it. Uh, there is, you can just about make that out there, that is the CG mark very close to the front of the wing. Uh, two of those, obviously. So we have another one, the opposite side. So again, that gives a much better idea of the fact that we have the two um, hooks that are going to be connected by some elastic. We have the vertical stabilizer pieces. This looks like the bottom part of it, or is that the top? That could be the top, actually. Um, the bottom part is much smaller. Okay, that's the way it works. So that's the bottom, that's the top, that's gonna go around. Um, this has got room in here, so you can put your antenna inside. It's been designed for that, so I might do that on mine. And then we have the main body, the star of the show. This is the body of the new wing. So again, very, very inspired by its bigger brother or sister. So to open it, it's the same catch cell lock. In here, we have the battery strap. We have the connectors for the servos, we have the little O-ring that's going to keep the wings in place together. Uh, then we have the battery holder at the bottom, uh, made of balsa wood. Uh, there is a channel in here. Hopefully you can see that it's designed to run the cables from the front to the back from the VTX unit. Once you've got those cables in, then you can glue that into place, making sure that you don't glue the wires in position. And that little other piece of wood is to go here in this back section because that is where the flight controller is going to go. So if I grab the all-in-one in that gap there like that, and then that cable is going to go through the front, but that's incredibly neat the way it's just going to fit there. However, of course, if you are going to be using another flight controller and use something to mount it on, that's what the piece of wood for. A couple of other things in here as well. If I push this out the front, we have a cage that is designed for your HDFBV system. So this is gonna have room for the camera at the front. We also then have room to mount your um, HDFPV gear in the back. These slots mean that you can get pretty much any, it's been designed around the DJI 4 a unit. I think it's pretty clear from the design of this. However, it's gonna work with anything. So I'm gonna pop walk snail in mine, and then it just slides into place into the front and it's designed with a little bit of a recess so that when you push it in it kind of snaps into position and you can see it there just poking out the front lots of airflow the other thing is there is the motor tray at the back uh, the motor tray the motor mount is going to be on there i have to work to get that out a little bit i'm going to try and do it here as live on camera let me give that a wiggle but the whole tray comes out and that's going to allow me to mount the motor nice and rearward well out of any mucky air and then plug it into the back of the all-in-one that's going to be sat on here so let's take a closer look at some of the features of this particular model this new capito again the nose has a massive air scoop in it. There is an exhaust here at the bottom. Uh, this is the cage. Hopefully you can see a little bit better here close up. Uh, made of what appears to be carbon fiber, all glued together. Um, so this should be pretty universal. Let me just check what the gap for the... Okay, so it's about 20 millimeter gap, so 19 millimeter 
stand uh, cameras are going to need standoffs in here um, but I do like the way that this is just kind of designed to just kind of push home into the nose um, and it has that nice kind of positive click make sure you get it the right way up it needs to be so that the bigger cutout is at the top and then when you push it home there's that little thunk that also means then if you do fly into anything and anything strikes the camera the whole unit can slide back out of the way next part then is uh, in here we have that recess that you can hopefully see I kind of reflect the camera light back. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to use that in mine. It might be useful for things like the signal cable, uh, but the power cable, I don't like running the power and signal together. I would probably hot glue it uh, under one of the shelves here at the side. We do have then the battery piece that can be glued on top. That then means that we can put the straps and things through it. There are a couple of recesses for the straps um, here at the back and also Hopefully you can pick that up here at the front. We have the catch that it latches onto. Uh, we have on the side here the locatings for better uh, locations for the wing. And we have the main spar and the secondary spar. The secondary spar actually does a couple of jobs. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, this is where the flight controller goes. So let me grab that next. So they again, this is the new all-in-one flight controller from Team Black Sheep. I love the idea of one black box, and it is, actually has the flight controller and the ESC. You just plug in your servos, plug it. It means that an awful lot of the messing about with soldering and other bits and pieces isn't needed. And I know lots of pilots get in contact with me who struggle with soldering. Um, and with the exception of making the cables off, that's not too bad. And I like the way they've also labeled everything up um, we have the room for the SD card here at the top. Then we have the GPS, uh, the receiver, and the USB connection. The USB is a separate little floating uh, connection, which we'll put somewhere inside. Then we have the VTX and the camera. If you're not running digital stuff, we have S1 uh, to S6 here. And then we have TX2, RX2, camera, and VTX stuff at the back. So we will set that up. That's pretty easy there is a diff file available and again to install that is simplicity itself you just kind of have to route the power cable then post it in and then it just sits down to kind of fit in um i just i just love the way it does that that is such a neat way to do it there is room on top for a receiver i may put my gps in here on top um, there isn't a natural place to put a GPS, but you know, that's um, the only thing I'm missing at the moment is a little GPS position. We have the recess for the vertical tail, and uh, this actually came out quite easily. What I had to do was put a carbon rod through it and just push it out. But this is the other tray that sits at the back, which actually has the mountings for the motor. Again, it's kind of um, carbon fiber, but it's all been put together. And there are a couple of holes in here. That hole, actually, when it's installed, lines up with this rear spar. So when you put the spars in, it's held in place both pinned horizontally via the rear carbon spar, but also vertically for the tail. So once you have your motor on there and the cable comes through that you're gonna plug into the back of the flight controller, then you just slide that whole thing into position. Nice little positive snick. Then we have one hole here that the tail is going to go through. You glue the tail in. Um, I wish the tail had been removable. I'm pretty sure you could probably do it. Wang a couple of magnets and things on here or have some kind of thumb tightening thing um, I'm probably going to glue mine just for speed uh, but that would have been nice because this is a relatively low profile thing that could go in a backpack but the motor is going to sit out here speaking of that uh, this is what's in that other pack I can show you a little bit closer up we have some mounting screws uh, we have some push rods and we also have the auxiliary flight controller mounting piece here that if you're not using this new funky all-in-one unit can just be screwed into place on there then we have the big bag of bits let's have a look at what's in here gps so we have a little GPS. It's an M10 base GPS. Tick, V, good. Very happy about that. That's going to just go into the GPS port on the side. And we have the other cables that go with everything. 
So this is the little remote USB board, standard stuff. It has a boot button, buzzer on and off. It has a buzzer on it. And this is probably going to get fit somewhere where we can easily get to it, probably somewhere like there. So I can plug the USB cable into it. Um, just make it as easy as possible, really. That will have a lead that will go into the USB port. We have a couple of extra cables for that, as well as extra cables for things like the receiver and whatnot. So that's great. We have a prop. Now, this is one of the interesting things I mentioned at the beginning. The pilots who've been testing this thing have used everything from two to six S, lots of different motor and prop combinations, have got ridiculous speed, but also really good endurance at this thing as well with flight times over an hour. So this is how it comes standard if you buy the kit from TBS at the moment. It'll be interesting if they made kind of motor and prop setups for kind of endurance or, you know, flight like you stole it or, you know, combinations or whatever. But I'm gonna build and test mine as it comes and then potentially we can tweak it out later on. But that is the prop as it comes. Another little cable. We have the two servos. So these do need extension leads um, because they're not quite long enough to go into the wing and go into the body. Um, they are included in the retail kit. They didn't come with this kind of review kit. But very nicely, we have metal gears, which is good. And I believe they're digital as well. So they're gonna be relatively easy to set up. But I will put the extensions on so that I can take the wings on and off. And then finally, we have the motor. Now again, this is the motor that goes with the prop. And it also has, excellent, there's the motor screws. We'll need those. I'm gonna to have to actually cut the bag. So this is just gonna plug into the back of the flight controller. Again, spectacular that we don't need to do lots of additional soldering. And there is the motor. Very um, kind of multi-rotor appearance. Uh, 2207, 2000 kV. So pretty standard stuff with the connector on the back, which means that that is going to fit into the all-in-one flight controller. Uh, these connectors are polarized, so you can't get that in the wrong way, but that's really neat, isn't it? I love that. So what are my plans for this? Well, I'm um, gonna set it up as it comes with the electronics in the box. Let's test flight with that first and see what it's like on the default configuration. Again, as I mentioned in the int introduction, this is a much more versatile plane in terms of very wide flight characteristics. That forward swept wing is going to hopefully mean that it is gonna be a lovely gentle stall characteristic, which should mean it flies a little bit slower. Probably gonna have a little bit of fun, maybe do a build video on how you actually put the thing together and put it all in one piece. Do a video on setting up iNav on it as well with iNav 8, it needs to be iNav 8 uh, for the new flight controller that it has with it now. And then uh, let's do a maiden and see how it actually performs. But some really, really nice ideas on here. I love the idea that we have a HD cage in the nose, which isn't actually secured. So that means it's just gonna go in and out. Uh, excited to see how the new flight controller performs as well, because that, actually is a really cute idea for lots and lots of wings, not just this little Capito. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.